Lost power, fallen trees, downed service lines, and roads cut off. Needless to say, Burlington's emergency services have been busy this week. Even before last week's 5.8 magnitude earthquake, we all knew Hurricane Irene was coming and Burlington was preparing. We met here with the majority of the department heads on Friday. We met down at the basement of the annex and like a prep meeting, I had the uh, emergency uh, services director, uh, town manager, all the department heads. We did a strategy session there. Uh, we had been taking part in uh, conference calls with MEMA throughout the week. They were basically one a day in the beginning of the week and then they went to two a days as the storm approached. We were uh, getting ready for a Category 3 uh, hurricane. That's the word that we had gotten from National Weather Service and different uh, emergency uh, outfits that give us information. So uh, over the last week, we actually got ready with the equipment and personnel. Uh, we make sure that all the pump stations were working, that the generators were filled up and then they were actually operational. Being downgraded to a tropical storm did not stop Irene from burying her teeth on New England once she hit. Basically, uh, we started around 6 o'clock Sunday morning uh, with the brunt of the storm and between 6 o'clock Sunday morning and midnight Sunday night we responded to 70 storm related incidents. Uh, cleaning up debris, uh, trees that were across roads. We have probably about 12 of them around town. Uh, good sized trees that we have to remove. Uh, we responded to about 50 different locations to remove uh, different types of debris. On Sunday night, the mark of Tropical Storm Irene became clear. We had actually seven trees fall on houses throughout town. Um, just different areas. Uh, the, the hardest hit areas that, to us were the, the Fox Hill area. I visited this home in the Fox Hill area on Wheatland Street. Here, the Middlesex Tree Company was pulling wood off of the property by the tree load. So busy and riddled with service calls was tree service owner Chris Martell. He was called away before I could get an interview. Nearby, this tree barely missed this house by less than 10 feet. On Fox Hill Road, Verizon crews were first on the scene for these downed lines, resulting in days of power loss and completely cut off Vincent Road. Many Burlington residents were left without power for days, in fact. Well, we're still getting some related calls. Uh, there are still areas in town that are without power. There are still some streets that are still blocked. Um, the trees and poles are down, but until you know, we can coordinate the efforts with NSTAR and Verizon and such, um, and, and then some type of tree removal company, so we can coordinate that, it's going to be an issue for a while. We still have, uh, I believe, three roads that have some kind of detour or, or areas blocked, and it's due to uh, power lines. I mean, we were able to remove the tree debris in some cases, but the power lines uh, were live in three different locations, so we can't get near them. Uh, so those are the only three areas where the roads are actually closed. And for those here on Laurel Hill Lane and throughout Burlington still feeling the ramifications of Tropical Storm Irene. Nobody was hurt, storm related. Continuous uh, power outage around town, that's, that's a major concern. But as far as operations and the DPW, uh, uh, we actually have gone over that hump right now. We're, we're going back to uh, maintenance mode. As for most of the eastern seaboard and other parts of New England, our small town got off light. Count your blessings, Burlington. From the storm-torn streets of Burlington, Massachusetts, I'm B News reporter Tad Stefanak. Back to you in the studio.